Hey, so a while ago I was posed this problem of determinant tic-tac-toe, and it seemed right up my alley of weird tic-tac-toe related experiments, and I thought it would be pretty fun to take a stab at it. So what is determinant tic-tac-toe? Well, the basic idea is that instead of placing x's and o's on a 3x3 grid, you're instead placing 1's and 0's in a 3x3 matrix. Play continues until the entire matrix is filled. Then, zeros win if the determinant of that matrix is zero, and ones win otherwise. Alright, so that explanation may make sense if you have an intimate understanding of linear algebra, but I'll hedge my bets that a majority of my 30-person audience would want a more thorough explanation than that. So our matrix in this case is a 3x3 arrangement of numbers, in this case all ones and zeros. The determinant is a property of a matrix that tells you, well, it tells you a lot of different things about the matrix, but in this case, we're concerned with whether the determinant is zero. So let's take a look at what that means. There are plenty of algebraic ways to calculate the determinant of a matrix, and in fact, when I made a program to play this game, the program uses one of those ways. But for a human player, understanding the calculation of the determinant isn't really helpful to understanding how to win. So let's look at what more intuitive properties a matrix with a determinant of zero has. If the determinant of a matrix is zero, it means that the matrix is linearly dependent. This means that you can add or subtract multiples of one or two of the rows in order to get the third one. Here, you can see that if we add the first two rows together, we get the third row. Other examples of a linearly dependent matrix would be any matrix where two rows are identical, since if rows 2 and 3 are equal, you can add 1 times row 2 and 0 times row 1 to get row 3, where any row is all zeros, since that will be equal to all rows multiplied by 0, or if any column is all zeros, since you can't have three linearly independent sets of only two numbers. This may seem like an arbitrary property, but it actually tells us a lot about the matrix in question. If a matrix is linearly independent, so if this property is not true, we know that any set of three numbers can be created by adding together multiples of these rows. Now there are plenty of interesting properties of linearly independent matrices, but in this case of determinant tic-tac-toe, we don't actually care much about them. We're instead focused on making this property true in the first place, because that means the determinant will be non-zero. The goal of team zero in determinant tic-tac-toe is to make the matrix linearly dependent, while the goal of team one is to make the matrix linearly independent. And another important aspect of the game is that ones always go first. So the question was posed was, does team one have a winning strategy against zero? If so, what is it? There are plenty of mathematical ways to going about solving this, but if you're aware of my previous videos, you'll know that I like making games myself. And you'll also know that I'm a bit obsessed with a specific type of game AI known as a minimax algorithm. So rather than simply looking at the already existing solutions or trying to solve it on paper for myself, I wanted to get a bit more hands-on in my solutions, so I turned Determinant Tic-Tac-Toe into a real playable web game. Check it out, the link is in the description. But now that this was a real, playable game, I wanted to find an intuitive way of conceptualizing the strategy. Playing this game at first felt like a random crapshoot, because it isn't very easy to tell whether a matrix is linearly independent just by looking at it. But eventually, I came up with a pretty easy way to tell, and it essentially just followed the criteria I talked about before. Zero wins if there is a column of all zeros, a row of all zeros, or if there are any two duplicate rows. If none of these conditions are met, one will win. And pretty soon after I had made this game, I was pretty sure I had a winning strategy for zero every time. In order for zero to not have any rows or columns of all zeros, there must be at least one one in every row and at least one one in every column. So because of this, let's assume ones make their first two moves in different rows and different columns. Once this has happened, no matter where one has gone, there will only be one other place that ones can play to complete having a one in every row and every column but it will be zero's turn, and they can just block it, preventing one from winning. Now, at first I thought that, that explanation was sufficient, but it's actually not at all. That explanation is equivalent to saying that, in regular tic-tac-toe, O's can always win since X's need three in a row to win, and O's can simply block them whenever they do. But this doesn't account for X's setting up a two-way win condition, or X's attempting to win more than once per game. Once I made the AI, I realized the explanation was a bit more complicated. But let's start with how this AI works. I've explained Minimax on this channel before, so I'll skip over some of the details, but I think it's worth going over the basic gist. If you want to see the more detailed explanation, it's linked in the description. A Minimax algorithm is an AI that essentially brute force solves a game. Given a board, it looks at all the possible next boards, and then it recursively applies the same algorithm to each of those boards until it reaches the end of the game. 
Then it gives a positive value for all the winning boards and a negative value for all the losing boards. Then we iterate back up, taking the highest value if it's the AI's turn, assuming we'll make the best move possible, and taking the minimum value if it's the player's turn, assuming the player will also make the best move possible against us. So that means if we just run this algorithm on the first turn for either zeros or ones, we technically have an answer. If our initial empty board has a positive value for ones, then we know there's a winning strategy for ones. If it's negative, then we know there's no winning strategy for ones, and there is one for zeros, and there must be for one of the two since there are no ties in this game. And it turned out, no, there was no winning strategy for ones even though they went first. The winning strategy exists for zeros only. And because of this, I actually made a slight modification. The downside of this minimax algorithm was that it assumes the best opponent possible. So that means that the ones didn't even try when zero still had a winning strategy. I mitigated this by modifying the values of the boards on the second to last turn, adding 0.1 to the value for every win condition ones had below it. This meant that even when one didn't think it could win, it would still have a preference for boards that gave it more win conditions on the last turn. So then I had technically solved the problem just by writing this algorithm, because for any play given by one, we can just iterate through the tree to find the proper response. But that answer feels unsatisfactory. Though I find it very cool that the computer doesn't need to know any real strategy in order to win, it leaves the question of how do you win mostly unanswered, unless you want to memorize the whole game tree. So my next goal became to find a way to explain this strategy like I did the win conditions, in some way that a human player could recreate it. This started with some research. Searching for this problem online yielded many different university homework assignments, and some actually included a solution, but those solutions were, at least to me, pretty hard to follow. Especially with the lack of visuals, I found myself getting lost in the assumptions it made. And the final step of research was, well, playing tons of games against my AI, quantifying what Zero does against me, and then trying to reproduce that against a perfect one player. Step one. One will go first, and Zero should make its first move in a separate row and a separate column. Step two. After one's first move, Zero should then do one of the following. At least one will always be possible. Either A, get two zeros in a row or column such that one is forced to block you, and it must be forced to block you in a way that involves placing a one that shares either a row or a column with an already placed one. So, its blocking shouldn't get it into a new row or column. Or B, complete a row or column with a one and two zeros such that you have two ways to get two zeros in a row or column next turn. And by the way, if one ever doesn't complete a row or column that has two zeros in it, place the third zero and quit, you've already won. Step three, after one goes again, you should always be able to place a zero that again threatens a row or column victory, with the added caveat that one blocking this victory will allow you to do the fourth step, setting up duplicate rows. Step four, after one goes once more, you should be able to do one of the following. Either A, complete a row such that it's identical to another row, or B, place a zero such that team one is forced into completing a duplicate row. Now this is more descriptive than prescriptive. I essentially just described what zero did against me, then tried this strategy versus ones, and it worked every time. So before I wrap up, I'll give a few more details on the game itself. You can choose to play by clicking in the squares, with real players, with random opponents, and with the minimax. You can set either one to be ones or zeros by clicking in the corresponding box. It can be fun to mess around with. You can pit AIs against each other, and if the minimax knows it can win, it'll gloat at you in the bottom right. Definitely give it a shot and try playing a zero against the minimax as one to see if you can pull off the strategy I described. I tried to make it as understandable as possible, so if I did my job properly, you should be able to figure it out rather quickly, even against the minimaxed opponent. Additionally, if you're more technically minded and want to look at the code, I've included the source code of the game in the description, including a Python file I used to verify some things I mentioned in the video. And stick around and subscribe for the next video. I'm not sure what exactly it'll be yet, but it'll be a game theory type experiment in the same vein as this one, though perhaps slightly less linear algebra heavy next time. And before I go, I'd like to leave you on a question that I haven't looked into and that I don't plan on answering. We've shown that Zero has a winning strategy in 3x3 three three determinant tic-tac-toe, but we could imagine filling any square matrix in the same vein. So does Zero still have a winning strategy for any n by n matrix?